All right, so in the um, sort of introduction here, establishing this idea of using these Riemann sums, we haven't quite defined a Riemann sum yet, but this idea of using areas of rectangles to approximate area under a curve, right? We, we came up with this idea that we have some area and we want to approximate it as, you know, a sum of smaller areas area one, area two, and so on, up to some last one, which we called area n. Right? And we said, you know, it's, it's convenient sometimes when you have a long sum, rather than writing out the sum like this, to use this summation notation and say that it's going to be the sum i going from one up to n of a sub i. Okay, so what's going on here is we have, so we introduce this sort of new variable, i. i is called the index of the summation, and you'll notice that it, it shows up over here as well, right? So you have this summation index, right? Think of this as like a, like a you know, index cards or something, right? It's, it's, it's telling you you know, you have a list of things, and the index is telling you where on the list something lives, right? Is it the first entry, second entry? Is it the 32nd entry, right? It's telling you how to look things up, right? It's saying, okay, go to this spot on the list and, and look up the value that's there, okay? So if you had these numbers all just written down in a list, right, it's saying just add up each of the entries on the list, right? In the spreadsheet or something. You're just doing a sum, okay? Um, I here is the sort of starting value. N up here is the end, right? So that means that if you were going to write something like the sum i going from, let's say, 3 to 7 of a sub i, whatever a sub i happens to be, this would mean that you're doing a 3 plus a4, plus a5, plus a6, plus a7, right? So it's just a, it's a, it's a shorthand notation for this sum, right? And, and it's often easier to just write this down. It's more concise. It takes up less space on the page. Um, and as we're going to see, there are also certain properties that the, that the summation notation obeys that often makes it easier to work with, okay? Um, and so one of the things that might happen is maybe you're also, you know, rather than just being given a list, right, and this i is telling you kind of where, you know, which row you're at on your spreadsheet or something like this, um, sometimes rather than just giving a list, um, you're told how to generate the list. So you might be told something like, oh, and by the way, um, a sub i is, is equal to, I don't know, um, i squared minus 2. You say, oh, okay, it's i squared minus 2. Um, all right, so that means I can actually start generating these, right? So I have i, I have ai, and we just say, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? We, we take each value of i, we plug it in. We say, okay, 1 squared minus 2, minus 1, 2 squared minus 2, 2, 3 squared, 9 minus 2, 7, 16 minus 2 is 14, 23, 34, 47, right? And so if those were the values for this particular sum, then you can come up here and you can say, all right, what I have is I start at 3, right? So I do 7 plus 14 plus 23 plus 34 plus 47. And then you add them up. Um, another thing that we're going to see as we, move, uh, as we move on is that there are some cases where you can play around with properties and use formulas to actually simplify these sums, right? You can, you can break these things down. So you don't necessarily have to calculate i squared minus 2 for each possible value of i that you're dealing with, get those numbers, and then add them all up. Sometimes there are, there are tricks that you can do. Um, and one of those simple tricks that you can do is to realize that, you know, you have, a, you have an associative property, right? You, you, this 7, so 7 was really, you know, 9 minus 2, right? 14 was really 16 minus 2. 
23 was really 25 minus 2, right? 34 was really 36 minus 2. 47 was really 49 minus 2, right? And then you say, okay, um, well, one of the things I learned way back in, in elementary school is that the order in which I add things up doesn't matter, right? So I'm allowed to regroup things in this sum, as long as I'm sort of careful about signs. And so I could, I could say that this is going to be 9 plus 16 plus 25 plus 36 plus 49. And then I could say, oh, and, and minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, minus 2. Right? I can do it like that. Um, another thing you might do is, is say, oh, you know what, let's, let's just kind of say, let's not do minus, 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 minus. Let's, let's pull out a minus sign and write that as a sum. And then you say, oh, what I have here is the sum i going from 3 to 7 of i squared minus, and, and this one will look a little bit silly, but the sum i going from 3 to 7 of, of 2, right? And you say, well, wait, there, there's, no, there's no i in here. What am I supposed to do with that, right? Um, so, I mean, you can think of summation notation as, as something like a, I don't know, like, a, like a for loop or something in, in coding, right? It's saying, you know, 4i starting at 3 until it reaches 7, you add something, right? So this is saying for i starting at 3 and going to 7, add 2. So we add 2 at 3, we add 2 at 4, we add 2 at 5, we add 2 at 6, we add 2 at 7, and then we stop, right? Um, and so then you realize, well, really all you need to know here is just how many times did I add 2? Five times, right? So 5 times 2. Um, if you can come up with a formula for this one, right, sum of squares, then you wouldn't have to write out the sum. You wouldn't have to add things up. You could just plug things into formulas and get your answers. And indeed, that is what you can do, right? So we'll, we'll look at some of those results. We'll look at some of the properties. We'll look at some of the formulas um, in... Uh, in a little bit, but first we'll pause, we'll do one more example, and then we'll get into the properties.